In this video, I am teaching a student in my automatic car around the Mitcham test routes. Now, what we decided to do around here is give the student plenty of opportunity to think for herself and I'm not really guiding her. Uh, doing a small mock test um, without it feeling like a mock test. So I'm only giving her directions and watching her. And then obviously we had a conversation about how the lesson went and the mistakes she made. So it's always a good idea uh, to give your students opportunities to think for themselves. And if you still have to guide them, then obviously they're not ready for the test. So give op students opportunities to really evaluate the hazards, put their own thought process when they're driving. Because ultimately, when we are coaching these students, we are teaching them how to be safe drivers on the road and you don't really want to babysit them all the way through uh, your lessons um, so yeah a very good idea to give them opportunities in your lessons to not say much uh, where you're not telling them what to do and let them decide for themselves so over here I've asked my student to turn right at the roundabout which is the fourth exit signposted Brighton and Gatwick now it's very important to know what lane you need to be in. So as an example, if you are turning right at this roundabout, you need to approach it in the right-hand lane and you need to approach it with a right signal. Um, now, it's a fairly busy roundabout and anybody who's driven around Mitcham uh, will actually tell you that it's a very busy roundabout. So here, um, she's looking for the gap the time the actually the time that she chose to go it's a good time i've just slow mowed it here as you can see there was no cars on the right and <clears throat> she is in the right hand lane to um take the turn um obviously there was an incident so the second exit uh, has been closed off now here she almost misses the exit so around about where we are right now she should have looked left given a left signal and moved off but she just narrowly makes it. So I did point it out to her that you need to be more careful there and get into the left a lot earlier. Um, again, not something that you can fail for, but something that you need to be careful of. Uh, had she actually um, gone all the way around, that wouldn't equate to a fail either. So that's okay uh, for her to go over here. Uh, this part of the driving uh, is everything's okay. It's a 30 miles an hour road. So it is um, a wide road. So a lot of cars sometimes try and overtake you on the right. So position yourself in your natural one meter position from the left uh, and do check your center right mirror often to see if you are being overtaken. Um, sometimes people think that this is a 30 miles, uh, sorry, a 40 miles an hour uh, route but this is not the Croydon flyover where I've done other videos that goes towards um, Croydon Old Town this is the one uh, you're going towards Purley Way um, so maintain your left lane um, and it is quite a common route they do come up here sometime they use the decathlon car park which is the one I'm going to be using today um, where I've asked her to do a forward parking forward um, bay parking so here i've said to her after the traffic lights to turn left now remember here you want to make sure that you know you do your mirrors you give a signal and it is a give way here um obviously so you look to your right and if there is anybody turning from your right just like i've shown there then you need to make sure that you stop for them uh, she then goes into uh, the decathlon car park where you will see her doing a very good um, forward parking I did congratulate um, her on this maneuver uh, where we have tried a few times in the past and you know she hasn't got the um, the reference correct but on that day uh, one of her best forward parking so she did very well uh, she aligned herself up with the reference that we both agreed on uh, that works for my car and then she looked around, gave a right signal and obviously proceeded to get inside the um, the bay. <clears throat> so just here, uh, make sure 
that you are um, looking around and if there are other um, you know road users then be careful it is a live car park so there will be other road users um, so she does get it in as I said before uh, quite well gets it in there and notice that um, I teach all of my students to open the door and check it's a very good idea to open your door check you're inside the line and if you're not inside the line then check your mirrors look over your blind spot come out in a straight line and then see where your lines are and back into drive and go forward so we're just reversing over here uh, again I've asked her to come out which uh, whichever way she chooses and then to come out the car park as we go around here so be careful uh, there is going to be pedestrians uh, one of the things sometimes students actually forget the road markings you see inside a car park are mandatory so just like outside if you see a you know a stop sign or if you see a turn left a zebra crossing you know you these are mandatory signs that you have to uh, stop and respond to and if you don't then you will possibly fail or not even possibly you will fail for it um, so make sure that you are actually given it the same respect as you do the road signs on main roads uh, as well so as you come out of the car park one of the key things um, that sometimes students forget it says on the floor stop now if she did not stop on this um, sign then it's a fail but um, if there are cars like there was a cars here now when she decides to go the cars on her right they haven't actually moved away from her remember drivers can change their mind now this is her first major fault the lights just turn amber as I've slowed it down but she doesn't stop she goes for it now you know an examiner can do control you there or fail you because you need to make sure that you stop at amber lights when it's safe to do so and as you will see if you want to rewind the video you can see it uh, it was uh, very very obvious that she should have stopped because of the amber light um, so that was her first major mistake um, that I recorded um, as she went around here I've said to her uh, position on the right hand side and we're going to be turning right at the traffic lights now the problem here what she does and this can lead to other issues is there are two lanes going right that go towards back towards the Lombard roundabout she decides to choose the right lane whereas my advice always is use the left hand lane give a right signal and then it's a lot easier for you to take the turn the problem with being in this lane is you literally end up on the right hand lane of a two lane due carriageway now the problem that you will find is when you are actually taking this turn as you'll see here you end up on the right hand lane and then if other cars decide to overtake you from the left you could fail for that because you shouldn't be in the right hand lane unless you are overtaking or turning right and she's not doing either of those so again, I've recorded a fault. It just depends on the day whether other cars are actually going to be overtaking you from the left or if they are actually, you know, just going to adhere to the left lane and going. So she's making progress here. Uh, other cars um, haven't actually overtaken her, but I have recorded a fault. The overtaking that you see there, they might just be turning uh, off there. So you know you it can be done on the right but the best practice is to be in the left hand lane and then by now quite a few cars have have actually gone left so she got lucky there uh, had any cars actually undertaken her that would result into a major fault uh, for sure in my opinion now this road here is a two lane uh, single um, carriage uh, it starts off with one lane here it just merges into one and just after the mercedes garage it becomes two lane so make sure you are on the left hand side about a meter from the curb 
you can see some red lines on the left. I usually say stay near them and give opportunities for any cars that want to overtake you from the right. Um, we are approaching the Lombard roundabout and I've asked her to take the second exit, which is signposted Central London and um, Norbury. So here she's approaching it in the correct lane, which is the left-hand lane. But unfortunately, she makes her second major uh, fault here. Um, now, the problem is you can see on the right-hand side, I've slowed it down a little bit, that as she goes, she uses the car on her right as a shield, but one car isn't really enough. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see that there is a van and she's entered while the van is still on the roundabout. That is a major fault again because we don't know where the van was going. It was actually going on the first exit and you should wait until the roundabout is clear or you have two vehicles blocking the right traffic. There, there was only one vehicle, which is definitely not enough, um, you know, to, to work as a blocker. So two vehicles or one large vehicle um, or long vehicle, I should say, not large vehicle, one long vehicle, um, like a tran um, like a uh, articulated lorry or bus, you could use them as blockers, not a problem. So this road is a 30 miles an hour road. We're just making progress. There's going to be some traffic over here. Um, so make sure that you are actually um, making progress on this road. Uh, you don't want to be driving 20 on a 30 road. That's not good progress. Make sure you are reaching the speed limit if it's safe to do so. Uh, and I would make, you know, my students, I constantly remind them um, what is the speed limit. Now, as you can maybe not see, there is no speed sign here. So when there are no speed signs and there are street lights, um, what, what do we assume that the speed limit is according to the highway code? So we have street lights and no um, uh, speed signs. So we assume it's a 30 um, because of street lights. Uh, we can assume uh, that it's a 30 over here. So this is uh, going towards Thornton Heath Pond. So the Thornton Heath Pond area does have two lanes. Uh, now, you know, as the, uh, the, um, as the video progresses, you will see uh, that she is a little bit in the middle uh, lane where she should have been on the left-hand lane from the very beginning. Um, so when you are doing the Thornton Heath Pond, um, you will find that it is two lanes. One has a bus stop in it which you can go over a bus stop, not a problem. And you make sure that you get yourself into the left-hand lane. Um, so like here, as we watch after the red vehicle uh, and the black vehicle, there's the sign. You want to be on the left-hand side from about here. And unless there is a bus or anything, you want to be more on the left-hand lane. She decides to be on the right-hand lane. Again, she got lucky there was no one on her side and no one decided to overtake her as well. But always maintain yourself on the left-hand lane. So a little bit of traffic here. So um, while we're here, we'll talk about, you know, when you are stopped, you know, should you apply your handbrake? The handbrake is up to you. If you feel that you need, you want to put your handbrake on, then it's good practice to do so. So th this is the bit she should move over to the left a lot more. She's still straddling and then she moves over. And as she goes past here, she does stay in the correct lane. All you've got to do is maintain the left-hand side uh, and then you go from there. She makes another error that you'll see. Um, in slow-moving traffic, it's very easy to be, uh, you know, like follow the herd. Whatever the car in front of you does, you do the same. And what she does over here, which you'll see in a minute, is there is a cycle lane before the traffic light and she straddles onto the cycle lane which is, again, not good practice. Uh, the cycle lanes are designed. Um, those white lines are first white line, solid white line is for the driver. The second one is for cyclists so to give them a uh, head start. So make sure that, you know, you are following those highway code rule. Uh, the video is going to end in a minute um, and just have a look at um, the few uh, seconds left on it. But um, make sure that you are actually practicing 
the Mitcham area, all of the bits that I have mentioned uh, are all pointers to help you guys get through the driving test. Uh, again, I'm hoping the videos will be helping all of my students and anybody I don't know. And obviously the, in the future, there'll be more videos uh, that I'll be uploading. Again, thank you for watching. Every time you lay, don't even wanna try.